all these nice little rectangles. So I'm gonna start with those, because those will be the easiest to cut. Messier than I expected it to be, but it's going well. There's this little bump under here, right here, this bump, and that's why I'm gonna be putting the wood. I'm trying to measure where the wood's gonna go so that I can cut the hole in this and just place the wood into the hole. And it looks like the center is also two and a half inches, so that looks good. And from the edge, it is eight inches. So now, do this. It starts eight inches from the edge, so about here. Two and a half inches, so about here. Which means my piece of wood is gonna go right here. So I have my piece of wood. And now, I'm just gonna trace around it. I'm not doing a perfect trace because, as I learned, if I do a perfect trace, the wood don't fit. So I'm allowing this to be a slightly wider trace. Not a lot, maybe like a couple millimeters. I have this little outline, and now I'm just gonna cut it out. So now that I have it cut, it should just spread out. Wow. That one came out easier than the other side. So you can see here, I've cut out right where this little flat part is. And the wood just drops right in. I did this on the other side as well, right by the wheel well and then that little piece over there. I've got another piece here, but it's covered in scraps right now. Um, it looks just like this one. So now I'm just gonna do the same thing with this wheel well and then that little piece in the back and I'll be all set. turned out so much better than I thought. It was harder than I thought. Like it was, it was more tedious than I thought, but I did it. So now what I have done is I have gone ahead and numbered all of the pieces and then taken pictures of the entire floor so that I can know exactly where to put these pieces back because what I'm gonna have to do is take all of these out so that I can do a good deep clean of the floor before I use the adhesive to glue everything down. I am back in the van today. What I started off with before I start officially covering up the entire floor, I've been laying out a bunch of pieces of measuring tape and take a bunch of strategic pictures so that I can get an idea of where all of the ribs are so that when the time comes that I do want to potentially drill through the bottom of the floor, what I don't wanna do is drill through, you know, make a hole that includes part of one of the ribs here. I want it to be in a nice like flat surface Surface, not on this part. So now I just have to finish this part here and then I think I do want to go ahead and insulate all the way up to the edge right here. The tricky part is going to be the step. Um, I got the little plastic tread thing that was kind of broken. Um, I got that off so I need to put another piece of wood here, insulate between it. The really really tricky part is going to be this corner because there are no ribs. So I don't know how exactly to make sure I have framing that is of the same height. So we'll see on that. <laughs> I am having to put the pieces of wood on top of the ribs because the insulation is laying on top of the ribs. So to make it the same height approximately, the wood has to go on top of the ribs, which is fine. It just causes some trouble on this part here. Trouble I'm sure I can solve, but trouble nonetheless. So I think my solution is gonna be that I'm going to use 
these guys, but turn it upright for the step pieces where there's no rib. That way I can just kind of trim it down to be the same height as everything else. All I'm gonna do is just trim that piece right there. Okay, so that, it's not that that didn't work. It's just that I realized I don't have the right tools to cut this much off of a tiny little piece like this. So then I thought, well, what about the furring strips that I got? So I thought maybe if I stack them, it'll be about the right height. And as you can see, it's, it's too high. So I would still have to trim it down. But then I thought, wait a minute, what about two of the furring strips? And look at that. That is nice and even. I did it. All of the framing and insulation is cut. I think it looks good. The doubling up on these seem to get to the right height. I guess I'll find out someday if that's a good idea or not. Um, luckily, anywhere that I did that is like near the end. So <coughs> if I ever do need to fix that, <coughs> I'm breathing in insulation. <coughs> so yeah, so if it turns out that that's not the right way to do it and it causes problems later, luckily it's all by like the edges. So that's fine. Um, I should be able to fix that later if I need to. So I'm gonna take everything out real quick, sweep everything off, dust or whatever if I need to, and then I'm gonna bust out the, uh, the adhesive. All right, so I'm about to start gluing, which means I'm about to start doing the first part of this project that is somewhat permanent, which is absolutely terrifying. I'm using two types of adhesive. I'm using the Sikaflex for the wood, to bond the wood to the metal. And then I'm using a spray adhesive for the insulation. I have no idea why I chose those things. I've just seen them on YouTube. Seems to me just like common sense-ish <laughs> that those would be the best options for each material. I don't know this for a fact, but my feeling is that the spray adhesive will be better for the foam board insulation. So that's what I, why I'm going with that. But uh, yeah, let's get started. <laughs> pretty good progress. I just wanted to stop for a second to kind of explain something that I'm doing. I did go ahead and put this piece of plywood in because the two furring strips that I'm using are like a little bit well thin, so they're kind of bowing a little. So I wanted to make sure that enough pressure is getting on them to keep them flat against each other while the glue sets. A mistake I made <laughs> that I hope doesn't get me in too much trouble is that I, uh, Got a little bit of glue on the underside of this. The two pieces kind of fell apart and I dropped the wood down. I tried to wipe it up as best as possible. I may kind of open this up in a second to just double check and make sure that I'm not gluing this down because I do need to get this back up. So I'm gonna check it again later. In the meantime, I'm gonna continue gluing all of the wood and insulation down. I think we're actually gonna get this done today. I'm about a quarter of an inch off somehow. I think I'm still okay. I think a quarter of an inch is fine considering I have two inches of space. I don't know where I went wrong and there ain't no budge in this. Like it is what it is at this point. Cause that piece of plywood seems to line up correctly on the cross beam. So I don't know where I've messed up. I tried trimming this piece of insulation down I can maybe trim this one as well and get a teeny tiny little bit more room. I'm gonna try to trim some stuff. I'll see if I can get it as close as possible, but I think I'm just gonna have to leave it as is. 
and hope that everything else works out. I got everything glued down. Well, not everything. I got almost everything glued down. And I only say almost everything only because I'm gonna wait to do this piece because that's two of the furring strips again. And I wanna make sure I have something heavy to put on it while it cures. And I don't really have that much heavy stuff to put on it. So I may wait and do that when I'm ready to actually put in the plywood for real. So that means for today, I'm done. I'm gonna let all of this cure. The adhesive will cure really quickly. Like the spray adhesive will cure by tomorrow. The Sikaflex, however, is not gonna cure very fast. I think it said like eight days or something. I'm not gonna wait eight days to do something or to do the next step, but I am gonna wait a few days. I'm feeling really good about today. I finally got the floor insulation and framing down. So now I'm just gonna wait for it to cure and then I'm gonna take the pictures with the measuring tape again so that I know where the wood pieces are for later on when I wanna secure things to it, including the plywood. But yeah, thanks for watching. Bye. Oh my gosh. This is actually my first time to open one of these cans, so I'm gonna read the instructions. We're making a big mess. Oh gosh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay. We're gonna find out how this goes.